uh, in gate from mattresses you will get um, every every year at least one question and sometimes you might get two questions like you uh, know a combination question uh, some kind of questions from graphs like uh, adjacency matrix like that okay so whatever it is this this topic is also important in terms of uh, the number of questions we get in the gate as well as it has uh, you know applications in other 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 subjects also right so what i'll do is in this video in the first video i'll just present some basics even though you know them i'll just uh, try to you know just go through them very fast uh, so that the subject will be complete okay uh, so there are some matrices which are very important uh, for some operations so i'm listing down all those matrices here and we shall go through them and then we can get into the operations okay so first of all a matrix is nothing but uh, it looks like a 2 by 2 by 2 uh, you know array in data structures we have already seen the 2 by 2 arrays right so rows and columns will be there it is a kind of 2 by 2 array and now you know general the general way of representation is like this we put some square braces and then we write m by n where m represents the number of rows in the matrix and n represents the number of columns right so m means number of rows and n means the number of columns right and when m is not equal to n then we call such a matrix as rectangular matrix and when m equal to n we call such a matrix as square matrix for example if i have any matrix like this if i take any matrix like this the number of rows in this is 2 and the number of columns in this is 3 right and m is not equal to n number of rows is not equal to number of columns such a matrix is called as rectangular matrix whenever m is not equal to n it is called as rectangular matrix and when m equal to n that is called as a square matrix right so if you if i write any matrix like this right such a matrix is called as a square matrix 3 by 3 got it so what is the importance of this rectangular matrix and square matrix is later when we are doing some operations like uh, solving the equations then i'll tell you it, it plays an important role to distinguish between these two okay and the next type of matrix is the uh, unit matrix so whenever you are trying to perform matrix multiplications unit matrix is very important so why is it called unit matrix is it is exactly same as the number one in the uh, number system for example when you are talking about the uh, natural numbers the importance of one and the importance of unit matrix in the matrices both are same i mean they, are, they can be thought of as you know logical equivalent i'll show you why it is important especially when we do matrix multiplication okay so unit matrix is it is a it is a square matrix square matrix means always the number of rows and number of columns should be equal in a unit matrix and then the the diagonal element this is called as principal diagonal okay so what is diagonal elements means um, you not understand diagonal elements we can we can think of it this way see let us say this is a matrix a and it is a 3 by 3 matrix and it is having nine elements and now the location of the first element is 1 1 first row first column and the location of the second element is 1 2 first row second column and the location of the third element is 1 3 first row third column right and then the location of the this element is 2 1 second row first column 2 2 second row second column 2 3 second row third column and then third row first column third row second column third row third column got it so when you have uh, when you have the elements like this okay now whenever you have uh, you know row equal to column this 1 1 2 2 3 3 when you see these are equal right we call those elements as principal diagonal elements got it so in unit matrix the principal diagonal elements will all be one and all the other elements which are other than this principal diagonal will be zeros that is that is what we call as unit matrix right and and the next one is null matrix null matrix means any matrix in which everything is zero is null matrix it need not be a square matrix you can take any matrix if all the elements of the matrix are called null or zeros then it is called as null matrix it is also sometimes called as zero matrix null matrix or zero matrix both are same and what is the importance of unit matrix is it plays an important role in matrix multiplication 
and uh, null matrix means it plays an important role in ma matrix addition okay i'll tell you uh, there are definitions which I'll, I'll tell you later it is called as multiplicative identity and is called as additive identity okay don't worry about it we shall come to the topics okay and the next type of matrices is row matrix row matrix means the entire matrix is completely one row that is called as row matrix so uh, generally the normal the normal representation of row matrix looks like this 1 by n 1 by n means 1 means only one row and n means there are n elements in the row got right? it n columns and column matrix column matrix means it, the entire matrix will contain consists of only one column right so uh, it the normal representation is like this n by 1 n by 1 means one column and n means n rows right so n by 1 means like this and then the next one is sub matrix any matrix obtained by omitting some of the rows and columns from a given matrix a is called sub matrix uh, so why do you want to omit uh, the rows and columns is uh, later i'll show you while we are trying to find out the matrix inverse right matrix inverse means okay we shall go step by step i'll tell you when, when that topic comes but then here try to understand this operation so what is a sub matrix is when we omit either a row or column or both of them or any number of them then we get something called as sub matrix right it is just similar to that uh, subgraph if you remember in subgraph also we omit some of the vertices or some of the edges or both of them and then we get the sub matrix the subgraph right similarly here also we can do the same on the sub matrix right so see this i'll just take take an example and explain let us say this is a matrix right and what is a sub matrix is one more thing it it itself let us let us call it matrix a a itself is a sub matrix to a a is a sub matrix to itself right and moreover if you try to uh, eliminate either a row or a column again you get the same matrix again you get a sub matrix right which means you can delete this then the remaining elements like this 2 3 5 6 8 9 this is a sub matrix of a or you can eliminate this also and you can call the remaining right 5 6 8 9 this is also a sub matrix or you can eliminate this row as well which means this will be eliminated and 8 9 is also a sub matrix got it so you know um, a sub matrix is nothing but you eliminate either some rows or some columns or both rows and columns and the resulting matrix whatever you get you can call it as the sub matrix right and out of these sub matrices there are some special matrices which are uh, which are having um, some significance right so one such matrix is uh, principal sub matrix see this principal sub matrix means let us say we have a square matrix initially 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 a square matrix so from this square matrix you are supposed to find out a square sub matrix in such a way that the resulting sub matrix principal diagonal elements should also be the principal diagonal elements in the original matrix okay what i mean to say is see this now if you try to eliminate this particular row and this particular column first row and first column then what is the sub matrix you get 5 6 8 9 therefore the resulting matrix is also a square matrix first the given matrix is a square matrix now if you observe this these elements 5 6 and 8 9 now if you find out the principal diagonal it is uh, 5 9 isn't it so these elements these principal diagonal elements also happen to be the uh, to be present in the principal diagonal of the original matrix right so then such a sub matrix is called as principal sub matrix so how do we get the principal sub matrices from a square matrix if you if you uh, eliminate the corresponding row as well as the corresponding column which means if you are eliminating the first row then you are supposed to eliminate the first column if you eliminate it that way then you are going to get a sub matrix in which uh, you know we get the uh, principal sub matrix right um, 
So let's do one more example. Uh, I want this point to be clear because it is very important later on. Hmm. Let's eliminate second row and second column, right? Then see what is the submatrix we get, and then we shall see whether it is a principal submatrix or not. So this is the second row, right? And this is the second column. Now when we eliminate second row and second column, what is the submatrix that we get? The submatrix that we get is one, three. 7 9 right now this is a square sub matrix first of all it has to be a square sub matrix and one more thing <coughs> from a square matrix if you eliminate exactly one row and one column the resulting sub matrix is also going to be a square matrix <coughs> which means uh, why, why does it uh, happen that way is from a square matrix which means we know number of rows and number of columns both are equal m by m right and if you eliminate exactly one row and exactly one column then the resulting matrix is going to be m minus 1 by m minus 1 isn't it because we have eliminated only one row and one column and so the resulting matrix is also a square matrix right so always remember this from a square matrix if you eliminate one row and exactly one column the resulting matrix is also going to be a square matrix fine and now uh, when is it going to be a principal sub matrix is after eliminating the row and column you check the principal diagonal of the resulting matrix the resulting sub matrix that one should also happen to be the principal diagonal elements should also happen to fall in the principal diagonal of the original matrix right then we can say that it is a principal sub matrix now if you watch it see i have eliminated second row and second column then what did i get one three seven nine now you check the principal diagonal elements of the resulting matrix this is the principal diagonal elements right and 1 and 9 these two elements also happen to be the present in the principal diagonal of the original matrix then what can you say about this it is the principal sub matrix got it and and it is not always uh, true that if you remove any row and any column randomly uh, we are we might get the uh, sub matrix the principal sub matrix it is not true why is it so is let's check this one instead of eliminating first row first column second row second column or third or third column so one thing is for sure if you eliminate first row first column second row second column third row third column if you eliminate any of these like this you are going to get principal sub matrix that is fine but then uh, any other combination of eliminations may not result in the principal sub, uh, sub matrix right for example let's eliminate first row and second column which means let's eliminate first row and second column and then see what are the elements remaining if you eliminate first row and the second column the resulting elements are going to be 4 6 7 9 right and now if you observe the principal diagonal it is 4 and 9 but then 4 is not present in the uh, you know principal diagonal see i am not talking about the particular element 4 I am talking about that uh, you know position right initially this is 2 1 right and here it is 2 1 but 2 1 is not present which means if, if the uh, if the original matrix is containing the elements 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 something like this then the resulting sub matrix should also contain a part of the part of these elements as the uh, principal diagonal element then only we can say that the resulting uh, subgraph is principal subgraph principal sub matrix okay fine so let's see some more properties on this then we can look at the problems okay